Hello everyone, my name is Michael and welcome to another episode in the Selenium tutorial series. In this episode we will see how we can solve HCAPTCHA using the 2CAPTCHA API. So yeah, with that said, let's get into the video. So first of all, click the link down in the description and you will be redirected to this page right here. 2CAPTCHA is a paid service but the cost is quite low so you pay $3 per 1000 recaptures, sold recaptures. So yeah, have that in mind. Now that's recaptures, but I think the price for H captures are basically the same or quite similar. So to use this service, click the link down in the description, which is an affiliate link, and you can sign up through there, and then you will get an API key, which I'll show you how we can use it later. So now we have an H capture demo that 2 capture provide us and here we can see how we can solve that. So first of all, what I want to do is go back on the code. Make sure you clone the code down in the description. And I'll create a new file. So let's name it hcaptcha.py. And let's copy a demo here. So let's go on main.py. And let's copy a demo. So we'll copy all of this. And also copy the way that we created the browser. So this is a demo. So what, what we are doing is we are importing Selenium and some other stuff that we will probably use and then we create a chrome browser and then we visit a page in our case we will visit this page which also has the demo so let's copy the url and paste it here and let's test it out so if you are using visual studio code you can click right here to run this python code otherwise go on terminal on the same folder as your code and run python and then hcapsa.py. So that will open a window and there we go. So now let's go back on the documentation and let's see how this works. So first of all, step number one, it says to open the developer's console in your browser and find the element with the data site. So it shows you it looks like this one right here. So as you will see right here, we're going to need the data site key and we also have the Python example. So we will use that as well. So first of all, let's find the data site. So let's go on our developers console and what we can do to find it really easily, we can grab this right here and then do a control F. So go on the elements tab, click somewhere right here, click control F and then this will open. So it says find by string selector or XPath. So I'll just copy this. And then as you see right here, it goes directly to the iframe of this each captcha and as you see we have the source here and on that url so if we open it or just copy it as you see we have the site right here so let's open it in a new tab and then let's try to locate that site key and there it is and if you can see this much right this one right here so that's great so that's how you can find it really easily now you can also search for the id or the h captcha but it doesn't this div doesn't always exist in my case it didn't exist but you might find it that way or the way that i showed you basically the same way so now that we located the site key now i want to mention that always stays the same so you don't have to make the script look for it so we are okay on that side now let's go on the python script and let's copy the example let's copy it go back and then create a new python script and call it actually we can do it on the same script so yeah let's do that so let's do def and then solve h captcha and then copy that now there is some changes i want to do so first of all let's remove the comments then we have to install this package right here from python but let me clarify some things so whenever you try to download this you will not do pip install and then to captcha we have to use another name so let me show you how we can do that so the correct naming is pip install to captcha das python so let's copy that i'll have the link down in the description as well and let's go back and let's run this command now it will start downloading the to captcha python package and it, that was pretty quick so let's go back now here you will add your api key which i'll show you in a bit how you can get and we don't need this so let me move that here what we will do basically is print e and then return false so if there is an error if it doesn't get the result we will print the error and return false so we can have an if statement and here we will just return the result there we go so what i want to do now is here provide 
some elements. Actually, we don't have to do that. So here you will put the side key that we got. So make sure you change that with the new side key you get. And here for the URL, just get the URL of the page you are trying to solve the capture for. And you can do it dynamically. So the way to do it dynamically is to pass the URL here and here in case the URL is dynamic. And then when you run solve capture, basically you'll provide the URL like that. The URL and then browser dot current URL. And browser dot current URL will give you the current URL. So that's how you can do it dynamically. Now I'll not do that. So let me remove that as the URL is static. And yeah, let's leave it like that. Let me import at the start. There we go. So next thing now is to get our API key. So after you sign up using the link down in the description, we now they are not sponsoring me, but but if they are watching this video, I'll really appreciate a sponsorship, but I'll really recommend them as I have used them for a long time. So on Zoom signing up, you can scroll down and right here you can see your API key. Now you need to deposit some balance in the account so, so the script actually works. Otherwise, it will show you an error that you, you know, your balance is like zero or something like that. So yeah, copy the API key. So replace your API key with your actual API key. Now let's leave that and actually let's do that on the top and let's put that on the top of our script. So the next thing to do is to go back on the page and if we reload the page, you'll see the HCAPTCHA doesn't load immediately. It takes a few milliseconds to a second and we need our script to wait for the CAPTCHA to load and then start solving it. So the way to do that is we can get the selector of that CAPTCHA. So what you can do is right click, click inspect, click this button right here and hover over the H CAPTCHA. And here what we can do is wait for the iframe. So we can right click, click copy and then copy the selector of the iframe. Then we can go back. Okay, so what we can do is wait for the iframe. So what we are doing is we say the browser to wait for X amount of seconds. So I put 10 until the element is located and we are using by the CSS selector and we can put the CSS selector we copied. So whenever the CSS selector is located, then everything after that will run. Now you can adjust the timeout depending on how fast the HCAPTCHA loads on your page. But if it doesn't load within those seconds, it will give you an error. So have that in mind. Now the next step is wait for the result, which may look like this. So let's go ahead and get the result. So to do that, all we have to do is run this and attach that to a value. So we can say result equals to this, and then we can print the result. So let's rerun our script and it waits for the HCAPTCHA to be loaded. Now it is loaded. So now it will request from the two CAPTCHA API to get the result using their Python packet. Now that takes a few seconds, so it doesn't happen immediately. So we will wait for that. And there we go. So we got a JSON, which has the CAPTCHA ID and also the code. So let's get the code from that JSON. And how we can do that is let's say code equals to, and then result, and then we get the code from that result. And that's basically how you can do that. Now, another thing we can do is we can say if result. So if we actually got a result and we didn't get false. So if we got a result, then get the code. Now, the step number three is to go on the developers console, find the text area with this name right here, and then put there the received code and then click the check box. So let's see how we can find that text. So I'll copy this and I can click right here and type control F and then type that. And as you see, the text area is right outside the iframe. So that makes it easier to access it. So we don't have to access the iframe to access the text area. So that's good. So now let's find that text area using the name and then let's update the value. So let's go back on the code. And I have done that already. So let me copy that and I'll explain what that does. So right here, what we are doing, we are executing a custom JavaScript script because by default, the website will not allow us to update the text area value. So we have to use a hacky way or something like that. And we are basically telling the browser to execute a JavaScript script, which what the script does is it says, okay, document.getElementById. 
Okay, so we can replace this method get element with the query selector, which is the same thing. And then we can provide the selector we want. So the selector is the name. Go back and here let's replace that with this one right here. Now I have to make some changes and that's how you can basically query selector for the name. And then we get the inner HTML and then we update the inner HTML with the code. And that's how it works. And then lastly, what we do is we say browser, okay, find the element. And I'm talking about this button right here and click it. So if we right click and click inspect, as you'll see, actually it's not the same. So let's copy and then copy selector and then update it. There we go. And then we can say buy and then CSS selector. And yeah, let's test it out. So let's see if it works and we got an error. So let's see what it says. Okay, it says, message javascript error missing this okay so i managed to fix the error so i had to update some syntax error right here and i did something like this in order to accept single quotes around the name right here the name selector so yeah it's kind of complicated but that works so again let me test it out so you can see it so if we run the script again now it will wait for the h capture to load it will send a request to the to capture api using the to capture package then we will get the code and we will update the text area with the code and we should get success in a few seconds and there we go so it says capture is passed successful and it only took a few seconds for the script to do all of that so have that in mind so yeah that's it for this video let me know down in the comments what you'd like to see next also you can download the code from the github repository down in the description also hit the like button if you enjoyed this video subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss in my future videos also make sure you check the new discord server in the description and yeah you can join the discord server ask your question and help build a community so you can help each other with programming